take it though. Hey guys, how's it going? Elliot here again. In today's video, we're going to be having a look at a pretty special item. It's actually going to be something related to this right here, which is the Cougar Boy. If you have not seen my retro handheld extravaganza video on the Cougar Boy, then I will leave the link in the top of the description. In Europe, it was called the Mega Duck. And uh, yeah, it was. this was the South American version. And it's pretty cool. It's got its own cartridges. It's uh, not like a clone console of a Game Boy, although that's what it's obviously in trying to trying to kind of compete against. Here's some of the games here. We've got the uh, Snake Roy legendary game, Black Forest Tale. And this is a game that's actually for something. Well, it's not a game, but we'll have a look at that a little bit later on. Uh, so yeah, I've only got two games. Just to let you guys know, I will be getting back to some retro repair videos. In fact, I've ordered a Mega Duck, which is really, really rare and hard to find, which is faulty. So hopefully I'll be able to repair that and I'll do a video on that anyway. Um, so you can do a little bit of a tear down of it, but it seems to be looking like it needs a bit of help. It's missing some screws and stuff. So we'll see if we can fix that. Anyway, without any further ado, let's go on to this video. So the uh, the Mega Duck was the European version, as I mentioned. Um, a company called Hartung was actually one of the people who um, released this in Germany and the Netherlands, I believe. Um, so this is the Hartung logo. This is a Supervision. Again, if you haven't seen that video, the Supervision video, I'll leave that in the description as well. Um, this was the kind of colour scheme Hartung typically went for, this kind of dark grey um, and some blue, um, the red as well, kind of just to match everything else. Um, so yeah, that's the Hartung logo. They released the Mega Duck as well and did the same thing. They changed it to a kind of a dark grey, had some really kind of vibrant blue buttons on it. And uh, yeah, that is what that is. Hartung also had something called the Junior Computer. Now that was a something that was released for children. I'll splice in a little photo of that right here. And the, the Junior Computer was just a kind of a learning computer for kids. It has some maths games and questions and uh, all that kind of stuff on it. And they also released a Mega Duck version of that Junior Computer. Now you might notice there's a slightly different background and this is definitely not a bed sheet on my table um, because I have to accommodate for the size of this bloomin' box. This is the Hartung Super Junior Computer right here. These are pretty hard to find. As you can see, it's a laptop with a keyboard and a piano and a mouse and a kid holding it like that, like a briefcase or something. There's the Hartung Panda. There's the uh, Hartung logo. That is the uh, Mega Duck logo. And yeah, so this is it. It's essentially just a Mega Duck console in a kid's computer. It's even got the volume wheel and the brightness control on the front there. The screen size is exactly the same, and you've got a little D-pad here on the mouse. Um, so that's the front, can't read any uh, of the writing. On the back we can see there's the um, Hartung version of the Mega Duck that I was on about before. A couple of them on eBay at the moment, but they're extremely expensive. There was a couple of peripherals released for this. There was a printer, which I'll get onto a little bit later on. There's a um, Drucker interface, pr printer interface, which is actually just, um, you can uh, print, print from other thermal printers, not just the Mega Duck one, so it's just got like a standard connector on the end. Um, printer paper, and then some Mega Duck mascots, which if anybody has ever seen any of those, and you manage to find one, then please let me know, and I will buy it off you for a hefty price, because that is scary as shit. Um, and then there's also the NES adapter, which is how I imagine they say it, and it's also just the, uh, the power adapter, which is uh, on the floor, so I'm gonna have to reach down and get that in a minute. Um, yeah, on the side then, uh, we've got some of the features. We've got a clock, which is a pretty good feature. We've got some paper with numbers. We've got some more numbers. We've got some paper with lines. We've got some letters. We've got some Apfel. I've got to love a bit of Apfel. We've got a book. We've got some sort of shooting keys or something like that. Uh, we've got a keyboard. Uh, we've got some... This is apparently programming, but God knows how that actually works. And then there's a, uh, a pencil at the bottom there as well. Sorry about the light, that's so that we can actually see the screen in a minute. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is some of the games that was released, all the same games as the Mega Duck console, and there's a picture of the whole thing in all its beauty, or lack of. Um, right, so let's set that aside, and let's have a look at the, uh, the console itself. Um, it's blue and grey, just like the this, so it's kind of cool that everything matches. We've got the Hartung logo, which seems to be a little bit like slanted. We've got the Mega Duck logo right here. Um, incidentally, before I move on any further, this was also released in um, Brazil um, under the name the Super Quee Quee or Super Quee Wee or something like that, um, which was released by a company called Sefa Toys. So I'll put a picture on the screen as well of that. 
Quee Quee, Super Quee Quee. Love a bit of Super Quee Quee, mate, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so, this is it. We've got a port here on the side for the mouse. We've got the two cartridge slots, which are exactly the same as this. They just accommodate for the, uh, the cartridge. This one's actually a memory card slot, which is what this is. A little bit more on that in a bit. We've got the um, on button for the cartridges. I think it's just to kind of lock them in place. This is a, um, a latch to open up the screen. Um, on the back, we have a nice little handle. We also have this little flap that lifts up. On, the t on, on here, it says um, something to do with the printer, connector for something else. Um, and then we've got the NES adapter. So yeah, we'll leave that up for now. On here we have a headphone jack and that's pretty much a lot. If we lift the front up, we'll be able to see that there's a beautiful screen on here and there's also a reflection of me, hello. Um, here's the keyboard. Can't put it off any longer, can I? Turn it around and hang on. We do get a bit of noise here, so I'll see if I can get it on camera. Or not, that's unusual. Usually it makes a noise, is there no volume? Let's get that noise again, hang on. Oh, we're not gonna get it now. Vutkamata. Is that what I think it just said? Um, right, God, high quality. Right, so here it is. The keyboard is pretty cool. The buttons are nice and clicky. Got a big space bar. Uh, we've got a little D-pad here, which actually controls what's on the screen to a certain extent, but more on that in a bit. Uh, we've got a couple of, well, I say, quite, I say a couple, we've got quite a lot of buttons up here. This seems to actually um, correspond with the different things on the screen, so each one is a different thing. So if we press F6, I'll open up the six, sixth thing, for example. Um, we've got our on button and off button over here. We've got watch. Uh, Engobe Druck, which is actually just a print. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to look at the printer in action in this video, although I can show it to you. Here it is. It's uh, just a thermal printer. It's quite cool. It really does actually work. I just need to get some um, some normal printer paper, not some uh, some sorry some thermal printer paper, not paper with receipts or stuff on it. Um, but yeah, that's it there. It's pretty cool. It takes uh, six AA batteries, I think. Um, but it, it does work, I have tried. Um, here's the mouse, which is basically just a Mega Duck control pad. It's quite cool, I would really like to get the actual Hartung Mega Duck and then put it next to it, I think it would look quite neat. So let's just get that plugged in, and then we can have a look at some of the features. Okay, so we're pretty much set up to go. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom the, um, the camera in, but what we're gonna do before I do that, just to save you guys from seeing all these horrible angles, I'm going to show you the the, uh, the piano, because then you can see it being played. So you can use the control pad on here, we'll zoom the screen in a minute, but this actually just moves the mouse. So we'll have a look then, you press select to open the um, to open the, the mouse, the, the function, press select again, and then you have your keyboard. It doesn't play two notes at the same time. And then everybody died. Yeah, uh, right. So <laughs> that's that. That's the piano. It's pretty much just it. Interestingly enough, because this is obviously a 8-bit piano, you can probably imitate the the game music that that is in the um, that plays from this to a certain extent. I'm going to close that up then, and we'll zoom the camera in so you can see the screen. On the uh, Super Quee Quee, this is made to look like a kind of an XP um, like window open, like a tab or something like that. Um, in this, obviously, it just it's just a black screen with the Mega Dark logo, um, Supercomputer, and the Hartung logo. But let's just have a look then at the different functions. So we've got the clock here, which is just a clock. I mean, there's not really much to uh, to look at, I don't think. It's the date is set to maybe when it was released, 1993. There isn't much information on this online, which is why I've refrained from mentioning information. Good job I didn't mention it. Uh, Datum, which is just a calendar. Again, just like the uh, the game.com, if you had a look at that video, it doesn't actually do anything. It's just just a, a calendar, I think. I've never worked out how to actually um, 
to do anything with it. So next up is a Tash and Specker. Oh, this is just a calculator. Let's have a look. Two plus three uh, equals five. Is it? Um, right. Little next up on the list is Notice Block. I guess this is just like a notepad or something. Can we can we have a look at a notepad? Uh, possibly not. No, I don't think we can. Um, <laughs> this is very good that I can speak a lot of German. I can't even read what those words say. Re oh jeez. Retschiribung. I don't know what this is either. Fantastic. Uh, next up we have a little man being drawn. So this is just the drawing feature. It's quite cool if that's what this is. I think you get to name the drawing and then, then you can draw. And then you can print from this directly. So let's try and draw something. I drew that. Um, <laughs> and then you can you literally just press the word print and then it prints it. But we'll have a look at that at another time. Um, let's turn it back on again. Uh, what else have we got? We've got BP. I think this is the programming thing. But I just don't understand what it, what it is. I, I can't program. And also I doubt this is going to be something that kind of... Uh, like intuitive for a, for a kid. I don't really know what I'm doing, so I'm just gonna close it. Don't know how that works. I might find, try and find someone who speaks German to actually try and tell me what the hell is happening. Next, we've got the piano. We've already had a look at that. Then we've got this, which is something else to do with programming, I think. Brilliant, another programming feature. I'm just as good at this one as I am on the other one. Um, we have a dictionary, I think, I guess that's what this is. Oh, maybe it's like a questionnaire or something. God knows. Uh, is there any that we've missed? I'm, I'm pretty certain there was a mass function on here at some point. Like a mass games. Yeah, here they are. Don't know how I managed to miss that one. Um, so on here we just have math questions, I think. So one, uh, 74 plus five, 79. Oh, hang on. I don't know what that means. 24 plus five. <laughs> what? 87 plus seven, Jesus Christ, 94. Very good. <laughs> Seven plus five. Ah, oh, I can't. I, I don't know that one. Um, no. Right. Next up, we've got the game function, which is exactly the same as the Mega Ducks. So I'm not going to have a look at this too much. Um, but the screen is a lot clearer on this than it is on my Mega Duck. I think it's because my Mega Duck's slightly broken. If I can actually get the uh, the car to go in here. There we go. And then it's just a mega duck in a laptop, which is just so relieving to see, to be honest with you. Start. So I think this is actually the only good thing about it, to be honest with you. It just means you can play your mega duck. Um, games with a mouse if you want to do that. You can't use the keyboard inbuilt on the um, on the system to play these games. I'm not entirely sure why, but I think it's really really cool that they did this. Like I know the Mega Ducks nothing at, nothing too uh, crazy, but it's nice that they it's nice to see the word Mega Duck on something other than the Mega Duck. Can't really make any jokes about this. It's just it's just Snake Roy. It's a joke in itself. A pretty cool thing to be honest with you. Um, as I said, I will be making uh, that video on repairing the um, 
un hopefully I'm repairing the Mega Duck. If I can't repair it, then I'll just do a teardown video and something like that. I'll clean it up and just put it in the cabinet. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much going to be it then for this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Uh, let me know if you guys want to see anything else. Um, we'll be having a look at the printer and the, uh, the memory card in more detail in another video. Uh, so Hank, thanks very much for watching guys. I hope you've enjoyed and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.